In this unit, we'll be looking at angles and parallel lines. In this lesson, we'll be looking specifically at different types of angles. All right. Hi, everybody. So in this, uh, well, in this chapter here, we're going to take a, uh, a look at some geometry. Uh, and, and I actually, I really, really enjoy this, this kind of mathematics here. Uh, I love the I love the rules and kind of the spatial reasoning and whatnot and, and being able to, to kind of deduce uh, the values of certain angles and the lengths of certain sides and whatnot. I really enjoy this, this, type of, uh, this type of mathematics here. In this particular lesson, we're going to look at just types of angles. Just make sure that you understand kind of the vocabulary uh, that we're going to be using here. And you don't need a protractor for this particular unit, okay? Because um, you don't need to necessarily measure the angles. In most cases, we're going to give you the numbers and then have you kind of figure out from there if this is true, then what else can be can be said to be true? But anyway, before we get to that, let's let's talk a, uh, a little bit about the the vocabulary that we use here. So, if you've got an angle that measures from zero to ninety, okay, and particularly we're not we're not including the ninety here, okay, but zero to ninety here, that's an acute angle, okay. So if it's smaller than ninety degrees, it's an acute angle here. If it's exactly ninety degrees, we call that a right angle. And oftentimes, instead of seeing that little curve right there, what you'll see is the little the little box to indicate that it, it is a, like a squared angle up there, okay? If it's from 90 to 180 degrees, so if it's larger than 90, okay, then it's an obtuse angle, okay? And if it's exactly 180 degrees, we call it a straight angle, okay? You might not even look at that and think that there's like an angle there per se. You might just see it as a straight line, but that's why we call it a straight angle. And if the angle happens to be larger than 180 degrees, we call it a reflex angle, okay? Now, by default, you might, when you see something like this, when you see two lines like this, you might immediately think of this as being the angle right there, and that's that's not a bad thing, okay? But be aware that there is, you can measure the angle from here all the way around beyond 180 to this, to this line right here, okay? So here's another way of just kind of visualizing it. A lot of times when we measure angles here, or we um, start to measure angles, we usually measure from the, what would kind of, if you were to put like a coordinate plane on this, not that you have to, but if you were to put a coordinate plane on this, put like little arrows there, so it's like the XY axis, oftentimes you'd, you'd measure from here and measure out this way, measure your angles. That's just a really common thing to do. That's why we write it out like this. So if you're measuring and you start here, any angle, okay, where the it might terminate or end in here, if it ends in this little area right here, that would be an acute angle, okay? goes up here, then it's 90 degrees. If it's in this area right here, it's obtuse. And then if it's in this, sorry, if it's if it's this straight across here, it's a straight angle. And if it ends up anywhere along here, we call that a reflex angle. And then 360 degrees would be a full, a full rotation, the full circle, okay? Anyway, so let's just take a look at some examples of, of questions that you might get. All right, let's just have a look at a, a couple of questions here. So we're just going to label the following angles as acute, right, obtuse, straight, or reflex. Okay, and I've got one, two, three, four, five uh, different options there. And I've got five different angles here. I, I'm sort of thinking that it might be one of each. It might not. Anyway, so as soon as you look at this first one here, as soon as you see 90 degrees, I know that this is a right angle. Okay, 90 degrees, definitely right angle. And this one here, because it's measured as 45, and I do appreciate when we see the little line there, that little curved line, because it tells me which angle it is that I'm measuring. Because remember, I could have a, a reflex angle that goes all the way around, okay, along the outside here. But this one's being, the indication here is that it's this angle inside, and because that's less than 90, this is acute. Over here, similar sort of thing. I do appreciate having that line there. Measurement tells me that's 135, okay? That is larger than 90, but less than 180. So we call that obtuse. Uh, this one here is quite small, but you still see that little line that's in, in there between the two, the two arms of the angle here. It's not the angle on the outside. So this is another acute angle here. So we had some doubling up on the acute here. This one, okay? And again, and this is where you're really going to see the benefit to this. This is 270 degrees right here. Now, this angle inside here would be 90 degrees, okay? So that the two add up to 360, okay? 
but this is the one that they're indicating and because that's bigger than 180 this is a reflex angle and you'll notice here that the one angle that's missing from this is the straight angle another way we can do this is to simply give you the values here okay so 315 degrees because that's bigger than 180 we are going to call that reflex and that's basically how you think of it because this angle here 92 because it's bigger than 90 degrees but less than 180 that is going to be obtuse that's just the name that we give to it okay and you don't even really have to think all that hard about it if it's between those two boundaries it's going to be obtuse 180 degrees if it's exactly 180 degrees we call that a straight angle 37 it's less than 90 okay we're going to call that acute 45 degrees is also less than 90 we're going to call that acute and 197 is larger than 180 degrees and so we're going to call that a reflex angle and there you go now there's a little bit more to it than that uh, than what we've given here but for the time being this is really what you need to get through the material uh, indicated in this particular course Okay, now before we go on and do a, a few more examples here, one thing to consider uh, when we're, see, you can't see the title there, we're approximating angles here. One thing to consider when you're looking at angles is, or, and this is outside of the math class even, is that sometimes we, we, we make approximations um, basically to kind of communicate roughly what kind of angle it is that we're looking at. And, and you'll hear people talk about this quite a bit if you just kind of pay attention to it. Um, so normally, when we're kind of approximating angles here, you, you think of it like this. We are very familiar with a 90 degree angle. I mean, as you're growing up here, you, you're introduced to squares and rectangles early on. The corner is, is quite obvious. Uh, you see this in a lot of buildings and whatnot. That 90 degree angle is pretty common. Okay, pretty easy to get your head wrapped around. 45 degrees is basically just cutting that in half. Okay. So we got 45 degrees here. Now, what ends up happening is if an angle looks like it's less than 45, we tend to approximate that with a 30 degree angle. Okay, that's that's kind of our reference there. Now that's that does not mean it's 100 percent true. I mean, if it's a really really small, it, you you probably wouldn't do these. But these are just to give you kind of a reference um, so that you can when you're when you're glancing at angles, you get kind of a sense of how big they're supposed to be. So 30 degrees is going to be a little bit less than 45 degrees, a little bit less than half. The 60 degrees, on the other hand, is going to be a little bit more than half of that 90 degrees, okay? A little bit more. So you might think of it like this. You've got that 45 going right down the center, and then you've got the 30 here, and then the 60 up here, okay? And then you've got the 180 degrees, that straight angle, okay? Uh, again, you might not even think of it as an angle, but 180 degrees is, is a measurable angle there. And just look at this. When approximating or estimating an angle, we need to be aware of which reference angles give the angle uh, the given angle is closest to. Okay, so just so that you have a sense when you're when you're making approximations, quick estimates. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of questions here. So approximately, what are the measures of the angles below, and then label each angle and write the name. Okay. Okay, so approximately what angle, angle is this here? Well, okay, take a quick look at it here. Um, you know what? And, and if you're you're not quite sure, just think of it here. I'll pull out. There's our 45 degree angle, right? So you kind of look at that. You can kind of see maybe the background there. Notice that this angle is a little bit less than 45 degrees. Not 100% sure. But that that could be roughly 30 degrees. Okay, now let's let's label it here. I'm going to put a point right there. I'm going to put a point right there. Let's maybe call this A, B, C. So it could be that I label it like this, angle A, B, C. So I start at A, A to B to C, where the vertex of the angle is in the middle. So this does not mean angles A, B, and C. This is angle A, B, C, A, B, C. Or you could have written that, for example, as angle uh, C, B, A. It doesn't really matter which direction you go. It's still going to identify the same angle here. But you might also sometimes, if if it doesn't create 
a bit of confusion here, you could also maybe call this angle B and just use the vertex to label that, that angle. Um, that's okay as long as there's no confusion, as long as it's like the vertex there B, the point B isn't maybe part of another angle okay, in a, in a more complicated diagram. Uh, this one right here, well, okay, it looks like it's close to 90. Okay, but it does look like it's a little bit less than 90. Okay, maybe just a little bit less than 90. So I'm going to guess here maybe, I don't know, maybe 85 degrees. Okay, I'm just approximating here, but I'm using my I using the fact that I know this is really close to 90 here. This one here I was a little bit unsure about. Um, and I think it's just an introduction, so just they didn't label it. It's close to 30. This one here, uh, I can look at it. I know it's close to 90 little bit less and again let's let's label that let's call this m n o and so 85 degrees is going to be angle m n o again the vertex is in the middle or angle o n m why not or angle n if you if you like now this last one here this is a little bit more complicated because it's an obtuse angle. Now, this is roughly 90 degrees. Can I just sketch that in there? But it's, it's roughly 90 degrees. And so what's this angle? It's not. It's certainly not halfway down the, the middle there. So that's maybe another 30 degrees in there. Maybe. And so altogether, I'm thinking that that's maybe... 30 degrees. So if I like, I would draw the little line here. I should have drawn those in there too. If I draw this little line in here, that's 30 degrees. But if I keep going, that's 90. So 30 plus 90 is 120. Okay, and let's call this S T uh, U. So that could be angle S T U, could be angle U T S, or it could be angle T. Okay, just a few ways that you could write that. Now for this next question, we're being asked to sketch. Okay, so give myself a line to start with. Well, 45 degrees is going to be roughly kind of halfway between between the zero and the 90 there. So, and I know that 50 is going to be just a hair more than that. So I'm going to draw something that's maybe, uh, that's not exactly what I wanted, but just a hair more than 45 degrees. I tried. Okay. Maybe I didn't succeed, but I tried here. 345 degrees. Okay. And I got to think about that. 345 degrees. Now that's a reflex angle. Okay. That's really close to 360. So I got to think here, 360. How far back is that from 360? Well, 360 minus 345 is 15 degrees, which means this is almost 360. It's almost a full revolution, but it's short by 15 degrees. So let's just think about what that would look like. So I'm going almost all the way around and now I think about this, I think about what my 30 degree angle would look like. So here's my 45, 45 is going to be like, if I was to draw another line here straight down, and maybe I, I'll do that with a, like a dotted line here, 45 degrees would be smack dab in the middle of that. 30 degrees is a little, little less than 45. And then 15 is half of that. So maybe the line that I draw looks something like that. Now I, that actually ended up being bigger than I really wanted it to be. But it doesn't matter here because we're just trying to get an approximation here. And so this here would be my 345 degrees. And I want to draw that line, that curved line there to indicate the angle that I'm referring to. And not, remember, it's not this one right here. Okay. Uh, and a lot of times when people look at that, they, they do. They look at the smaller one. Okay. They, they instantly go to that one. 10 degrees. Okay, well, 10 degrees is quite small. So I just want to make sure I draw just a, a little angle right here. Okay, and so here we go. There's my 10 degrees. Probably should draw little arrows on all of these things just to be consistent. All right, 180. Well, that's, that's the easy one, right? Because as long as I draw a straight line, draw my little dot there, and then here we go. 
there's my 180 degrees. Remember, that's a straight angle. So it's just a, the angle that would be formed on a straight line. That's nice. 95. Okay, 95. 95 is just a little bit more so than 90. So I'm going to kind of estimate there's my 90. And this is going to be just a little bit more than that. Okay? And so here is my 95 degrees. Okay? And again, okay, make sure that you're that you're labeling it particularly with that little that little arc there just to indicate. And then 90 degrees try to make this as square as I can. But typically if I can't I'll use this little this little mark right there and that kind of just confirms it, right? When you see that little square symbol in there, I know that I'm looking at a 90 degree angle. And you always want to trust the labels, right? The diagrams you can't always trust. Remember when you're when you're looking at these things, these are basically approximations that you're making, you know. So if like if you're working at a problem and it doesn't have that little symbol there, but it looks like it's roughly 90 degrees. In a lot of cases here, the intention is that it probably is close to 90 degrees, but that that might not be exactly the angle that they're they're implying. So you can't just assume, okay? And that's it's an important thing to remember here. You, if they don't draw that little symbol there, if they don't label it with a certain size, they're just drawing an angle there don't assume that it is 90 degrees, even if it looks like it, it should be, okay? Um, but trust the labeling, okay? Trust the labeling even when it doesn't look like that, okay? Sometimes you're going to see an angle that is labeled at 30 degrees, um, and it's clearly not 30 degrees, but that's just because um, these diagrams often that we're going to work with, these diagrams often just get copied and pasted, uh, and so the people that are kind of creating the the questions themselves aren't being too concerned about the actual measure. They just want to make sure that you know what to do with the numbers once you've got them.